Hi everybody, welcome back to Angie's Answers. Today I wanted to come and talk to you about thread breaks. So we've had a lot of customers reach out that they're having issues with thread breaking and there are a few different reasons why this can happen. The biggest reason is if you're not threaded properly. That's one of the most important things to check is the path for your threading. So if you look on the side of my machine here, I have my thread through that first one and I'm right above this. I know for our customers, we've added this piece of batting in there. Um, that piece of batting is not adding any extra tension to the thread, but it does help smooth the thread as it's coming off of the cone and then into that first guide here on the side. So we like to have just that little tuft of batting in there. We also have it on our bobbin winders too. Um, seems like it helps. It also can kind of grab some of the extra lint too. So we've seen sometimes like a, a red thread will actually dye that batting a red color too and then we can just swap it out and replace it. So it's just a little piece of polyester batting that we've cut. So it starts up here. You always want to have your thread cone above the guide that you're using. You can use either one. I usually use the one that's in the front and then it comes through there through this little guide right up here by the gray bar. This three hole one is confusing for a lot of people. You just wanna make sure, think about it like, think of it like a barber's pole. So I'm starting from the back side of the machine and I am pushing it through that top hole towards the front and then I wrap it around and I go back to front through the middle hole, wrap it around again and back to front through that bottom hole. That's what we use for most of our threads, our So Fine, our Magnifico, our Fantastico, our Omni, that's what we use for most of them. If you're using like a monofilament thread or a silk thread, something that breaks a little bit easier, you might want to skip a couple of those holes and then that's gonna take a little bit of the tension off of the thread. Then you've got another guide right here. So you're gonna go straight down top to, to bottom through that one and then into your tension disc. So this black knob here is what controls the tension on your thread. There are two metal discs that are holding together and you have to make sure to get that thread flossed all the way into the middle of those tension discs. So think of it like you're flossing your teeth. You're gonna hold the thread and you're gonna pull it all the way up into the middle of those discs. That's what keeps the tension on the top. So we've had a lot of people call and say, I have really big spider webs and a bunch of nests of thread on my backing fabric. And it's 99% of the time because the thread jumped out of those two discs, it slipped out of there. And then there was no more tension on the top. So then all of that thread went to the backing fabric and made a big mess on the backing fabric. The good news is if that does happen, it's pretty easy to rip out because everything is so loose. You can just kind of snip a few places and, and pull that back out. But the mistake that people make is they will think, okay, there's a ton of thread on the backing, so that means that my tension isn't tight enough on that top thread. And they will just start to turn this knob clockwise tighter and tighter and tighter and think that that's what's gonna solve the problem. But the problem was it, that it was never in between those discs to start. So no matter how tight you make this, it's not going to solve that problem. You have to floss it into the disc first, then that's what's gonna hold the tension on your top. So after it's through the discs, you have, let's see if you can see it, a tiny little check spring right here, this little spring that's bouncing. Your thread has to go on top of that and then if I pull on this thread, can you see that spring bouncing? You kind of can, right here. That spring is gonna bounce up and down. That's how your thread brake sensor works. So if you are getting false thread brake sensor alarms, if it's telling, that, telling you that your thread is broken when it's not actually broken, it's usually because the thread isn't on top of that little spring. The spring is passing by this little silver cylinder on the side here, and that's your thread brake sensor. So every time it takes a stitch, that spring passes by there and that's how your machine knows that you have thread. When your thread breaks, that spring is no longer moving, so that's why it tells you that your thread brake sensor has gone off and that you don't have thread to check it. But sometimes you will see fake thread brake sensors when you do have thread, but it told you that it broke. And that's usually because the thread either isn't all the way in that disc so there's not enough tension on it or it's not on top of that little spring. And then after it goes on top of that spring, it doesn't wrap around the spring, it's just on top of it one time. After it goes on top of that spring, it's gonna come below this 
little number seven that's hanging out from the side and then all the way up to your uh, pull-up lever here. Take a pull-up lever. Take a lever? I don't remember what this is called right now. Through that one and that also threads from back to front through there. Let me drop my handlebar out of the way so you can see a little bit better. Then the next spot is here, this wire pigtail on the side. So it's gonna come from this lever straight down into this wire pigtail. Then, uh, let's see if you can see my needle. There is a hole right here above your needle. You need to thread it through there from top to bottom through that hole and then straight through your needle front to back. It's also really important that your thread is below your foot. Whatever foot you're using, make sure that that thread is below the foot. So when you first thread it, it's gonna be above and you need to get it below. So I just take a single stitch, slide away, and then I can pull that thread below my foot. Um, we've also seen thread brake sensors happen if when you're using the tie-off feature on the Amaras or the Forte machines, or actually Amara 20 and Amara 24 now, um, if I hold these and if I put my needle down, there is some slack in this thread. This thread is not tight. So that means that that spring is not going to move when I hit my tie off. It tells me to complete it, to gently move it. So sometimes the machine will tell you, hey, your thread broke because it didn't sense that that spring was moving. So you always wanna have your needle in the up position because that's what puts the most tension on this thread. That thread is tight right now. So when I do my tie off, that's gonna lock my threads together and it's not gonna give me a false thread break sensor. If it's happening beyond that, then sometimes we need to do some adjustments to how far that thread break sensor is, but we would help you with that over the phone if you did need help. Um, the other reason that you can have thread issues is if your needle is not in there properly. So if you think about your needle, there is not a flat spot on that needle. It's round all the way at the top. And there is a really long groove that runs the length of the needle. Your thread will nest in the middle of that groove as that needle is going in and out of all of the layers. So if we don't have that groove facing the front right at us at six o'clock, our thread can't get in there. And then that's why it can shred and break. Or if we don't have the needle all the way up into like the needle housing, that can also cause the thread to shred or break. So it's really important to get that straight in there right at six o'clock. So we like to cheat and I use just a really thin pin in the eye of the needle, but I am really gentle when I put that pin in. So let me grab one. I'm coming. <laughs> I swear every quilter we know has these thin little yellow head pins. So when I am changing my needle, I just gently put this pin into the eye of the needle and then that helps me see if I am right straight facing me at six o'clock or if I need to make any adjustments. And then make sure all of the handy quilter machines, this screw that holds your needle has a two and a half millimeter hole in it. So then you can put your wrench in and you wanna tighten that wrench, or excuse me, tighten this screw a little bit tighter than thumb tight. So we go like a quarter turn tighter. I'm not cranking down on it. I'm just going a little bit tighter than what I could get with my thumb. So then that needle doesn't accidentally drop down. Um, other reasons that thread can break is your tension. A lot of people think my thread is breaking so I need to loosen my tension. That's not always true. Because if you go too loose on your top tension, it can't actually make the knot and then that can cause the thread to break. So there's a happy medium of too loose or too tight. Um, and unfortunately it is kind of something that you have to learn with your machine. Every machine is a little different for the number of the tension that's on the top here. There are really good products, thanks, um, like Superior Threads sells a TOA gauge, um, T-O-W-A. We can also order them for you too. The TOA gauge is a way for you to put your bobbin case in and pull on it, and then you can know how much tension is on your bobbin thread. And that way, each bobbin, you'll be able to keep consistent because we do have our readout on our machines here of how much tension is on our top thread. So on the Amara machines, um, the Amara 20 and the Amara 24, the Amara ST, we all have this top tension 
caliber too so it tells us how much tension is on there and then I just kind of keep a notebook of when I'm using this type of fabric with polyester batting with so fine thread this is about where I want to start my tension and then I can kind of fine tune and adjust from there one of the other big reasons that we've seen shredding is if you have your quilt sandwich too tight a lot of people like to crank down on this bar and get that sandwich really tight and if you do that the needle can't go in and out of the fabric as easily so we like to have some give to our sandwich here if you take your finger and push it underneath you should be able to reach through the sandwich to your first knuckle that's how much give you want to have so i don't like over tighten and crank this down so i can't even grab there um, you do have to be careful let me get my thread out of the way you do have to be careful if you have one of the studio frames if you crank down too much these two bars are going to get really close here um, and then let me push my machine over here and then if you look like at the end of the frame i can fit my whole fist in here but as i work my way to the middle I can only fit comfortably two fingers and maybe three. Like I can't quite get three in there. So that bar is bowing when you have too much tension on this and then there's too much pressure on your fabric. It can't give. So you don't want to have this too tight. Let me loosen the end of my frame and you'll see that bar kind of relax back down. And then I should be able to get my whole fist back in here. So that's a few of the th reasons why we've seen thread will break or shred. Um, please, if you have any questions, reach out to us. It's Quilting can be so much fun sometimes and you'll think, man, everything was perfect yesterday and now today it's not working. <laughs> and usually it's something, a quick fix, either when you changed your thread, you missed one spot on the threading, your bobbin tension isn't set properly. Um, there are a lot of factors with this, but as long as you keep consistent, then you should have happy quilting days. So please let us know if you have any questions. You can reach us at our email is info at quiltingconnection.com. Don't forget to check out our website, which is also quiltingconnection.com. Um, and please like, subscribe, and follow to our YouTube, Angie's Answers. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.